Hi everyone! Welcome back to another edition of the Velvet Lounge Life. Today we are making things. Isn't this exciting? Um, we're going to make something that is unique to me and a lot of people have asked me over the last probably year and a half, maybe even a little bit longer, how I make my medallions. And what are my medallions? Because I make a lot of unique mixed media art items that I use for many different projects, including a big one, which are my junk journals. I have dozens of videos on junk journals and things that I've created, as well as I do talk about how I create some of them and some of my very exclusive items I will do a special video on probably a few times a year. And this is one of them to start the year out right. Okay, we're a few months into the year, but here we are nonetheless. So I wanted to show you guys how I make these, let you know what materials I use to make them. And to be honest, you guys, they look as if they're a lot of work but they are truly pretty easy, especially the way that I do them. Number one for me is recycle, recycle, recycle. So what that means is recycle. I do not go out and purchase anything to make these other than the main component and technically I really I, I yeah I guess when I pay for the suite that we stay at when we travel um, I am paying for the cups <laughs> so um, so those are some expensive cups if you think about it but we go we have um, a particular chain that we stay with and when we do use them we always use a suite and they always for the last I'm going to say at least 10 years and I don't know if this is an exclusive design to them, but they've used the same cups, which I love. So I will show you those as well. So one of the things that I like to do is I like to, for any project really, is I sort of collect things into like little trays. And in those little trays or boxes, I will start putting the items in there that I want to use for a particular project. That is not unique to my creation of my medallions. Or someone even said they remind them of miniature picture frames. Um, I will take it all and say thank you very much and I do agree with you <laughs> because I am sort of creating a story within this tiny little confined area and I love little things so that's just perfect for someone like me. Now, when I'm collecting these things, I usually do start out with the big or the biggest item first. For example, you will see this cat featured here. I've had this cat for probably seven or eight months and trying to figure out how I was going to use it in the form of a medallion. And I figured it out. I collected a few things and there you go. And that's another thing with this a project like this you can get as overloaded as you want or as minimalistic as you want. You might just want the picture in there and just some nice plain flat um, framing. Total, it's your imagination. There's nothing that you are going to create that will be wrong. That's the beauty of it. Or you can get, you know, more embellishy and go floral crazy if you want to or whatever it is that you like in this box i have a few example of things that will be going into other medallions this is a, a vintage chicago transit token yeah <laughs> so a token and i'm horrible you guys i admit it up front i am a horrible individual when it comes to adulteration of ephemera and other vintage and or antique bits and bobs so whereas other people would be like no that which it is this is very collectible this token um but in my mind i see it in an art project so guess what's going to happen it will be adulterated with glue 
um, jeweler's glue to be exact, so it's super permanent, and it will go into a project. Why? Because I have like four of these, so I'm okay sacrificing one. So that's just something to know. Make sure that whatever you use, I would say in any project, that you're okay with adulterations, which simply means that you added something to it, you did something to it, and it will never be the same as what it was before. Um, this is a cutout from the cards that I give away. I actually give these away. Um, you can look down below in the description of this video as to how you could receive an entire free ephemeral pack. And in your ephemeral pack, you'll get some of these postcards and you can, and that's why I created them like this so that in on the back and the front, there's images that you could cut out and use in your own projects, or you can just collect the postcards if you want to. Um, there's buttons. This Look at this fuzzy one. I thought this one was hilarious. So I wanted to do one that's like a 70s or maybe even a gaudy 1980s theme. And this fuzzy button will be going in there. And then there's other buttons that are in there. The, the silk flowers, um, you could make them yourself out of silk and glue and sewing and twisting and bam, there you go. Or you could buy them pre-made, doesn't matter. Um, lots of broken bits of jewelry or just whole piece. And yes, I have glue and um, paint on my hands because I created all of these today with the exception of this one. This one was already one that I had created a while ago. All the others I created today. So yes, here's the aftermath of that. Um, but with this one, I have this stick on um, like pearls that someone had given me. And yes, when you guys give me gifts, I, you will see your gifts are used in my projects. Like some of this cost, these stars came from a piece of costume jewelry that someone gave me. This piece that looks like a crescent moon, actually the chain went here all the way to here. So it was more like a smiley face. Um, but when I saw it, I thought, ooh, crescent moon. And I deconstructed the necklace and used it in this project, as you can see right here. Um, and in this one, there's more of my cutouts. The cat is actually right here. And that's from the cards that I created. And then this is also from the cards that I created. And what else did I use in this one? This is actually from a piece of jewelry, <laughs> the sun which will be going into a project. Actually, I should probably just put it in the box. Put it right there. Um, lots of buttons. This is a satin button. Um, this is another one of my cutouts. This is actually from a piece of jewelry and it's like a porcelain and someone painted this image on it. I might be using this on the cover of a junk journal, so it's probably not going to go into a medallion. And what else is in here? Do, do, do. Oh, some ribbon with a glass bead. And I just use black marker. I use acrylic markers and watercolor markers. When I make something like this, I will say that the cups do have like this coating. You could see it. It's a little bit shiny. Um, in order to get color to stick to this, you either have to use, you have to use an acrylic marker. So I know people use those ink, those smudging ink pads. You could do that, but the color really does not take. So if you really want a nice saturated color, you would use the acrylic markers. Now, if um, you want to use like watercolors, which is something that I do use in projects like this with this material, I actually go over this first with a white acrylic marker and then after using the white marker, let it dry for 24 hours and it will give you a base that you can um, use watercolors on. And then what I like to do is also um, sort of seal the color in. It's kind of hard to do. You have to be very gentle because your watercolor will hello it's water and color it will wash off but I did like for this one I did what the all this coloring you see is watercolor and marker I drew this lady and I actually use permanent marker to highlight her features but I drew her I highlighted her features and then I went over this with a light coating I sort of dabbed it on 
of Mod Podge to set this forever. So if a drop of water gets on her, you have a chance of cleaning it off as long as you don't let it just sit there. And so I also like to cut out words or if there's stickers with words. This one says believe. Um, I, you know, you can add those to this. You can get as wild as you want with this project as, you, as I stated, as you want to. This one, you can see I have a button here, which I actually sewed in. So I sewed it in this button. So this button can, you know, you can remove it. You can even put glue on the background, on the back of it, and then sew it in just, you know, for something that's more permanent. You have the satin flowers. This is from a wreath that we were throwing away or recycling, honestly. And I cut off just a couple branches to see if I would use them for future projects like this. And guess what? Yeah, yeah, I did. This flower is um, encased in lucite and then it's glued down. So this, you could see, I think you could see, yep, you could see the shininess of it. And then once again, acrylic markers. Um, and the acrylic markers I use, as you saw, are these and they do come in a like a crazy variety of colors including, I just showed you the metallics. So there's like metallic gold, metallic greens, whatever metallics you're looking for. Um, and that's why you see like this golden hue. And this is actually a one of those beaded glass bracelets. I don't wear stuff like this. So instead of deconstructing it to use the beads for something else, I thought it would be awesome as a frame inside of basically a frame, AKA medallion. And this one, um, I also use those sticky dots. Someone actually sent me some sticker dots and I thought it would be great to highlight her crown with the sticker dots. And honestly, this heart to me is sort of like, why did I add it there? Because I don't know if it really adds anything, but it does say love and freedom, heart, blah, blah, blah. This one, um, she is a nude and you can see that her cup rim is thicker because this is not a cup rim. This is actually a tape. This is from tape and it was on this like cardboard and I took off that, um, there was like this other, I don't know what to call it, but piece that I peeled off of here and then was left with this paper underneath. And then under this, what makes the backboard of it, I actually used a little bit of a heavier weight paper, which actually is from a recycled book. I shaped it, I glued it down, let it dry, then I trimmed it with my scissors, and then I ended up with this deeper um, medallion frame. And I sort of like her in a deeper frame just because she is a nude. So if you see her this way, you're really not sure what to expect. And as you turn her, you're like, oh, surprise. And what I did with her is I drew in this tree in the background and I also um, added leaves, some yellow highlighting, some blue like on the inner perimeter. And you can see how I sort of did splashes of color in there. I glued down these three stars, which like I said, were gifts um, from someone who sent me a bunch of costume jewelry. It was that, 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 and I want to say it was like maybe four or five pounds of costume jewelry that they sent me that I was able to recycle and reuse for a variety of projects and other things that they said I could use it for. So thank you to that viewer. You guys are all, thank you to everyone that, and I always thank you guys because I can't be thankful enough um, for sending me gifts, cards, leaving your comments, subscribing to the channel, watching the videos for 15 minutes or more. It really does help them because that shows that people do care about art. So they will try to put more art content out there, but if we don't watch it, then guess what? They won't put it out there. So anyway, you can see a variety of materials can be used for a project like this. And you can also see, as I, I believe, in my opinion, and these are from magazines, um, these cutouts, that I don't believe I used anything that was extraordinary or super special. Oh, and the cat also, she came from a magazine as well. I don't know why. I assume it's a she. She looks like a she. 
So those are the materials that were used. So these are the cups that I use to make my medallions. I have been experimenting with other cups. There is another one that I've used. As you know, this is from tape. These obviously are from a different cup. These two are from this cup and others that I made are from this particular brand of cup. I like using this cup for a couple reasons. One, it serves multiple purposes for multiple types of art projects because look at the outside of it. It looks pretty amazing. And you can also, obviously, as I did here, um, color in or watercolor, whatever you, uh, um, what are they? Um, colored pencils also work, you know, to sort of add some color, some shine. Darkened, I use my black marker on these edges. And this makes for a great pocket, a belly band, I mean, you can make a notebook out of this. You can make all sorts of things out of this part. So that's why I like using this cup is because after I peel this off, I don't just have to throw it away. I do cut away the rim because, I mean, what am I going to use it for? You could use it for something, but um, I do cut that part away and recycle that. But what I'm all obviously 90 percent of the time after is this and also when you I will show you how I do this you could try ripping this but obviously these cups are made to be sturdy so what I do is I just look for the inner seam and cut an inch or two into that see I told you it's pretty tough and then So my husband just interrupted me, of course. But anyway, what I do then is after ripping this all the way down, I just use my index finger and thumb. Put your index finger along the bottom and use this hand to turn the cup and just sort of gently remove the top from the bottom. It's okay if you have little scraggly bits, you are going to cut those off. So... We will clean this up even more, but the whole idea is you're trying not to rip into this inner bottom rim. If you do, uh, you can't really create a successful medallion with it. So you'll have to start over, I know, because I've done that before in the past and I've had to start over and it was fine. But the cool thing is, guess what? I still had this awesome part of the cup which I could use for future projects. And I, what I do also with these is in order to store them, I actually clean these up by cutting away all this excess, removing the rim, and then I flatten it like this one that you see here. And you just flatten it under books, put it under your laptop. You go like this, you know, to sort of remove the curve and then put it underneath. And before you know it, this is super easy to store. And when I'm bored or... I mean, honestly, I'm never really born, to be honest. But if I just want to do something with my hands and I don't want to get overly invested, then guess what? Start coloring these things in, and before you know it, you have stuff in your stash that's almost ready to go. So then after I've ripped this portion off, I'll put that to the side, what you end up with is this. So yeah, this looks pretty scrawny, but... No worries, like I said, we will clean this up. And to do that, what you do is you take, it's if you have fingernails, my nails are real, so if you see something, if I'm like, ooh, it cracked, it broke, that's my real nail, cracking and breaking. But if you have those nails that you go to a salon with, you know, to pay for or whatever, you might not want to do this, but it's up to you. But I find this is the easiest way is to just basically take a fingernail and put it under the edge. And I'm a gardener, so my hands are usually dry. Um, I end up with broken nails, chipped nail polish. It's fine. <laughs> At this point in my adventures, I, you know, hello, happiness abounds. So as you can see, I'm just sort of like using my nail to go underneath and lift the edge because some of this is still glued down. Some of it will be loose enough and you just want to kind of pull that up 
around the edge of this lip. And then after, I think that's just a little tiny piece. It's probably fine. Oh, I got you. And then after that, you're just going to trim away all of the excess because if you don't, I mean, to me, it looks pretty shabby, but hey, it could be a look. You could, you know, color those bits in. You could, you know, turn, I don't know, somehow metallicize them so they look like metal. Um, whatever it is you want to do. Maybe you're doing one that's an ocean theme. So that could be sort of like your wave or something that's mountain themed or just forest themed. And you could color it various shades of gray with highlights of white and yellow with blue peeking through. Whatever. So you could, you know, do something with this if you want to. But I like a clean edge. So I am going to remove the edge. Simply turn this disc upside down. Or is this right side up? And then you can kind of see where you need to cut this around the edge just to remove those scraggly bits unless you want to use those for something and you will end up with a pretty clean circle as a base for your medallion um, you might have to go over it obviously if you see anything else that you want to remove the thing that you're trying to do is keep the height of this lip you really don't want to make it flat because otherwise if you do you're just you know put not that you're just but you're creating something on top of a flat piece of paper that's in the shape of a circle versus what I consider to be a medallion and someone said that the, the I think I said I don't know if I said this but someone said that these remind them of miniature picture frames and I was like absolutely because I made one that had a Edwardian slant to it and I've made them with Victorian slants to them and other eras and so it sort of looks and I did it so that it sort of looked like a picture frame so I understand where they got that from and I appreciate that greatly So you end up with this nice clean circle as your base for this project. And what I do um, as I go along in my travels, etc., my work, is I will find things. For example, this thistle was in a magazine. And the magazine it was actually, was this a magazine? Yeah, it was in a magazine. I think it was a Home and Gardens magazine. And when I saw this thistle, I was like, oh my God. I have to cut that out and I actually ended up with a few different pictures from that same magazine of purple themed flowers thistly things and so my first thought is that would be great in a medallion so what I do is I have one of these more so as a template I think you could see the blue around it lay it down draw your circle cut it out and then it should fit neatly into that particular cup base that you're using. I, as you know, and as I just told you, love these cups. So, as a matter of fact, I'm not embarrassed. Look, I have a little supply here. Um, we pay a lot to stay in those suites, so I don't feel bad asking them for a few extra cups. Um, or when they come every day, they give us new cups. So anyway, as you can see, that fits in there amazingly. And then what I do, and I consider it layering. So I am layering items on top of items and overlapping. Well, maybe not obviously, but overlapping. So one of the things I do before I start that process is I decide what acrylic or markers am I going to use, meaning what colors. So I come up with a color story and I start, you know, putting my colors where I want them. You have this bottom portion. If it's not going to be completely covered, like this completely covers the bottom so you don't need to color it, but you do need to color the inner walls because you can see there's some sort of um, writing or print in there. You m might not want to keep this like this rough looking pale white color. It looks unhealthy. 
So you might want to go around with that in whatever color you want to add some pop. And also to me, it just shows a more finished item. And then of course the rim is another opportunity to add color and highlight. And another area that you could color is the back. But if you're going to glue these down, obviously do not waste your acrylic markers on the back. I would color the back in if the back is going to be seen. So let's talk about how I made these. So the way that I made these varied, um, but honestly, you could go wild. You can, you know, get as creative as you want. So we'll look at this first one. So this one I made using silk flowers and I also use, so this had a whole, as you can see, it has an entire floral theme, maybe a little bit I don't know, Victorian maybe in nature? I feel like it would be more Victorian if this circular frame was oval, but I haven't found an oval cup yet. I hope I do because oval cups would become my best friend and I would make so many of these in different styles and fashion, it would be wild. So if you come across any oval cup bottoms, please send them my way, let me know. <laughs> But anyway, what I did is I glued this down. I used my acrylic markers to, as you can see, color the background because if I didn't, it would just be plain white. And then I actually glued these in using a jeweler's glue. Um, this is a jeweler's glue that I use and I've been using the same jeweler's glue forever. And once you do use it, it is permanent. You can't recover the item. It will always have that hard glass like glue on it and then I sewed in you can see I not only sewed in the button but look at that red thread so the juxtaposition of colors designs fabrics materials textures it's all up to you colors etc um, and so I did that and what that does is it not only allows me to use this as you know a, it, I use it as a dangler I can also just glue the entire thing down, or as I did on this one, you'll see a surprise. But I also use these pieces, we were recycling a wreath. I cut off a couple branches to use in projects like this. This is a bow with a little glass, mercury glass bead in the middle. And this is the finished product pretty much. I colored the edge in another juxtaposition of color because look at this bright orange with this like splatter of silver metallic. You don't see that in the middle and I think that that is totally fine. It's great to have certain surprises, but then on the back you have another surprise with this couple and I haven't finished this one. I will be colorizing them so that they pop more and so that it's more of an interesting image and I will be doing some sort of scalloping around the edge. So this is one that you can, you know, show off on the back and the front and I purposely made it that way. Another use for these is hanging them from your rear view mirror if they have the back and front finished. I gave someone one with a gift card. So that's another thing is using these to embellish any presents. And when I gave it to her with a gift card, she's like, oh, I'm going to hang that in my car for my rear view mirror. I was like, wow, what a good idea. So that's one thing you could do besides using them as medallions or picture frames. You could do that as well. This is one that I really like because like I said, you look inside and there's a surprise. The lady is nude. If you're looking at it this way, you would never know. I do like the fact that this is a thick, this is almost an inch thick so that you can't immediately see what's inside. These gold stars were part of costume jewelry that one of you nicely gifted to me. And yes, I sent that person a thank you card and I sent them some ephemera and um, we keep in touch, which I love. And thank you, thank you, thank you again, dear friend. Um, and they, I believe she sent me about four pounds of costume jewelry for wear, recycle. And she said I could resell, but believe me, 90% of it I am using for projects and for wearing. But anyway... 
I also went in and I drew in this tree in the background with leaves, some yellow highlights for the sun. And I don't know why I felt that the stars were appropriate. I embellished the stars a little bit, glued them down with my jeweler's glue, did this bizarre decoration on the inside. And this one, the back is plain. And you can see the rim is a completely different color. This is one that I made a while ago. And this one, uh, was I want to say it was like maybe the second or third one that I ever made and she is at least I'm gonna say a year and a half two years old maybe a little I don't know if she's any older maybe two years old but I someone sent me some of the sticky glue um, down dots thank you to that person as well and she also sent me um, some strips of these like dots they're sort of like pearls and you could cut them very finely into these little tiny bits and bobs. They also have hearts in between. And, and I thought it was perfect for her crown. And then of course I put a heart sticker because love and freedom. And I actually drew her. I also highlighted her face more so because when I drew her and I used watercolor and permanent marker, I went over it with decoupage just by sort of dotting it on there because if I used a brush obviously it would make everything come off and then after it dried I did go over it with a brush and then what I did is I actually just highlighted her features a little more because obviously using the decoupage with watercolors the watercolor does lose its you know some of its um integrity and so you can see how that one was finished out as well. Um, did I show you this one yet? Let's see. So this one I made using some of the costume jewelry that the kind lady sent to me. Um, it was this bracelet. I was going to deconstruct this and actually there were a few of these bracelets in the package and I was going to deconstruct the bracelets and I was like, no, what if I use them for something else one day? I'll deconstruct as I go along if I decide to do that. And I'm glad I did not deconstruct them because I had the idea to create this almost like a frame within a frame of this particular medallion. And you can see that this has an Egyptian theme to it with this black Siamese cat. And I have stickers and one, and I have these around the world stickers for when our daughter used to receive Highlights Magazine excellent resource for junk journalers and so I used one of her Egyptian stickers well now they're mine I guess in here because hello theme and this is actually a bracelet that's glued down using the jeweler's glue I went around the rim of this at first it was just this beautiful sort of like a um spinel blue and but it just seemed too plain so then I just did dots using one of my metallic um, acrylic markers once again the rim of this has been highlighted as well and the sides and the back is plain but I could do something with the back of this one not sure I've been thinking about it and this one um, is one that I made which I've we'll be using in a future Halloween project. And this necklace was like that. The chain went like this and it looked like a smiley face. But in my eye, guess what? I saw a crescent moon. So there you go. And you have this cat that's dancing on the dark side, literally of a crescent encrusted with plastic I'll call them plasti stones, <laughs> um, these plastic faux rhinestones. And this is actually made of metal. It's like a tin. And when I glue this down using the jeweler's glue, you just glue it where the touch points are going to be. So if I glued it all through this middle, that would be a waste of glue because that part will never touch the paper. But gluing it at the touch points, it's in there solid. It's never going anywhere. My cutouts that I created use it, you know, when I create these cards, they have various things that you can cut out and use in your projects, or you could just collect um, my cards. Um, 
my postcards. And then I used, I did a double color in the background where I just colored that in using acrylic markers. I had the silver tone or the um, metallic marker go, I just sort of drew a line that was kind of messy through it just to give it some, you know, dimension. As I said before, that sticker Believe is in there. He has a little glue on him, so I probably will clean him up a little more. Like I said, my hands are like this because I created all of these except for one of them today. And then you have this rim that's been decorated using a graffiti marker. I like using graffiti markers for my edges because they're nice and thick. And also, if the ink is running out, you just, pr like, this is what the tip looks like. It, they're nice thick, and they have this chiseled tip, which is sort of like square in shape. If you, they seem to be dry, you simply press them down like that, and they become rehydrated. So it's a quick way to do your project without having to go over it again and again and again. You go once around with these markers, you're done. And as I said, they are literally graffiti markers. So make sure you have good ventilation. <laughs> I should add that as well. So that's, that's it, you guys. That's how I create these medallions. They're very easy to create, as you can see. They honestly... I kind of put things together as I go along and then when my little project box is full enough or I just feel like working on like making these or if I'm working on any other project I just pick it up work on it and when I'm done with it or I hate to say this but get bored or tired of it I could put it down and go on to another project box um, and I also can file these boxes away nice and easily so that they're you know, they look like a decorative item in the room more so than clutter. And also it allows me to sort of gather things before I work on a project. Like if I come across something, I'm able to put it in here and go back to it. When I think I have enough of the material together, I work on it. So as you can see for this, the tools needed were jeweler's glue, I do use this as a tacky glue. I use this tool, which I don't even know what it is. It came with a bunch of punches that I received um, as a present. So thank you again, you guys. And I use that to sort of press things into place. I used um, sewing needle. Um, I love my Coates and Clark thread, as you guys know, um, because it's nice and thick and it was meant for coats. So big, a nice needle and scissors and I use these little scissors nothing big and fancy and that's it that's all you need as far as tools so I'm sure you have these things around your house I'm sure you have enough items that you can recycle to use around your home I hope that you try this product I'm sorry try this project please let me know if you're going to try it let me know which of these are your favorite medallions which are your favorites um, or maybe you have no favorites. If that's the case, you can let me know that as well and why. But anyway, and if you have an idea for me, please let me know that as well in the comments. You can type paragraphs in the comment area and it would make me super happy. Another announcement I have is that um, I am having a whatnot sale. So you can find me on whatnot under the Velvet Lounge Life as one word. And also down below in this video, in the comments and the description, if I haven't mentioned it already, there will be a $10 free credit to first time users. And so if you buy an item and it costs $6 and the shipping is $3, guess what? You pay nothing. Um, it's just Whatnot's way of saying thank you for joining us. We hope you come back one day. But if you don't, guess what? You still got the $10. So um, there's that. Also, if you are interested in selling on Whatnot, there's a link down below that you can use. And I will be your referral. Being referred allows you to get approved much quicker and without jumping through as many hurdles as 
I had to jump through because I did not know anyone on whatnot, which is one of the things that they like. They really like when um, people who are already on the platform um, are approved and went through the whole vetting and training process because that's the other thing is unlike other like eBay or something like that, they actually have free training classes. You don't have to take them, but I would because why not? And also you get awesome, awesome tech support if you need it. But so far we only needed it once and it was because we did not know that we could not have the volume on everything in our house turned up to super duper sonic levels. So anyway, you can find all of this information down below in the comments and in the description of this video. Thank you for watching and please remember to take care of yourselves and have a wonderful day and tell me if you're going to make this project and what you thought of it.